Look up pictures of George Washington, and besides his impeccable clothing, you'll see a man that's cool, calm, and collected. The very image of a commander-in-chief. Now, what's not apparent when looking at these pictures is just how dysfunctional his upbringing was. Washington tread his own path in life, but his mother, Mary Ball Washington, was a complete nut job. It reminds me of a certain fictional relationship in the show The Sopranos. Now, I'm a big fan of the show, and if you've ever seen it, Tony's relationship with his mother is striking because it's one of the few in the show where he doesn't get his way. And to make it even more comical, he's this hulking type A personality. It's the same thing with GW. Today, ladies and gentlemen, is all about George Washington and his unique relationship with his mother, Mary Ball Washington, and how it literally and figuratively gave birth to an unprecedented nation during tumultuous times. Brought to you by History Watch. From a young age, George Washington decided to prove himself in combat and did just that, earning a reputation as being fearless in battle and with a remarkable ability to stay composed in dangerous situations. If George's mother had her way, however, America's founding father could have led a much different life. At the tender age of 14, at the prodding of his older brother Lawrence and Lawrence's father-in-law, Lord Fairfax, an influential Virginia landowner, George attempted to join the British Royal Navy. After delivering a letter to his mother from Lawrence, recommending the decision to join, Mary forbid the plan altogether, forcing the young man to take up land surveying instead. Though disappointing to a young and hot-blooded George Washington, this decision would prove useful for him later in life, as it allowed him to procure more and more land and endowed him with a deep knowledge of the territory beyond British control. Washington's familiarity with the frontier piqued the interest of Major General Edward Braddock, who was tasked in 1755 with expelling French forces from Fort Duquesne, a strategic entryway into the Ohio Valley. The general needed an aide with an intimate understanding of the backwoods and invited an aspiring soldier to join his personal staff. After his first botched attempt to enter the Navy's ranks, George wrote eagerly to Braddock that, quote, I wish earnestly to attain knowledge of the military profession communicating sincere yearning to serve under a gentleman of General Braddock's abilities and experience. Even with the dream of a glorious military career within his grasp, the shadow of Mary Washington wasn't far behind. George had just begun taking care of Mount Vernon, a sprawling estate previously owned by his brother Lawrence. George greatly admired his older brother, and after his untimely death in his early 30s, he took responsibility of the property. With no one else to manage Mount Vernon, and a looming military appointment on the horizon, George asked his younger brother Jack to help in his absence. Now Mary Washington, who depended on Jack to help tend Washington's childhood home, Ferry Farm, was so infuriated with the thought of losing the man of her household that she showed up unannounced to Mount Vernon on the very day George was scheduled to meet with Bragg's aid. In order to resolve the issue, Mary thought to prevent George from joining the military. In explaining to Captain Orr May of his unexpected absence, George wrote, the arrival of a good deal of company, among whom is my mother, alarmed at the report of my intentions to attend your fortunes, prevents me the pleasure of waiting upon you today as I had intended. Fortunately, George prevailed and met up with Braddock and his men in Maryland as they made their way through the backcountry. Now you'd think at this point Mary would decide that enough is enough and let George do his thing. But no, Mary had to have the last word. After his mother's attempt at barring him from working alongside the general, George tried to calm her by explaining that he was content, writing, quote, I'm very happy in the general's family, being treated with a complacent freedom which is quite agreeable to me, and have no reason to doubt the satisfaction I hope for in making the campaign. He always had this very formal, stiff tone when corresponding with his mother. It never ended with, love George, hugs and kisses, none of that. Instead, he signs off with a, I am honored, madam, your most dutiful and obedient son. Now, mind you, while she's communicating with him, he's encamped somewhere on the frontier, en route to the enemy, and she asks for him to send her a hand to help out around the house and some butter. It's a small wonder America's first president was famous for his unflappable exterior. Having gone through the gauntlet of his mother's exacting standards since birth, George grew up with the discipline of a drill instructor. It's been said that, as human beings in terms of motivation, we're either running toward or from something. 
in Mary Ball Washington, she was a strong personality with some great qualities and not so charming ones. It's evident that George took on some qualities and others he avoided entirely, that he became the antithesis of them. I mean, here was a woman who, instead of simply wishing her son the best, she'd tell others, well, George had better have stayed at home and cultivated his farm. A woman as self-centered as Mary gave birth to a man who was ready and willing to sacrifice everything in pursuit of something greater than himself. He would often position himself in the most vulnerable position from the enemy on the battlefield and even in retreat. Early on in the war with Britain, after his forces had been smarted on Long Island, George decided to make a hasty return back across the Delaware to safety inland. Britain at this point was throwing the full might of its naval empire at the waters surrounding New York and Washington's motley crew of sad, tired, and defeated troops was a shadow that started strength, both in numbers and morale. The Continental Army was truly on the ropes and could have easily been wiped out by the Brits and their vicious mercenary counterparts, German soldiers known as Hessians. While most, if captured, would be pardoned, George didn't share that relatively positive outcome. As the front man of the operation, Washington would suffer the worst fate and be made an example out of. He would be executed and forced to undergo whatever form of torture at the whim of King George III, who considered him and the rest of the colonies rebels. Despite all this, a young lieutenant witnessed firsthand how Washington sat tall astride his horse on a miserable return journey, saying, I saw him at the head of a small band, or rather at its rear, for he was always near the enemy, and his countenance and manner made an impression on me which I can never efface. A deportment so firm, so dignified, but yet so modest and composed, I've never seen in any other person. Well, that does it again. Thank you so much for watching. I uh, apologize for any kind of audio issues. Just getting over COVID right now, so my voice is a little bit raspy. Um, but again, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode.